So the Diablo team has uh, released another video, another war video for us to look at. This one is called uh, The Ward of Terror uh, from the Book of Warath. Uh, and I've been loving these. I've, re I've uh, reacted to the first two. And um, the fact that this one's called The Ward of Terror, uh, my guess is this one's going to be maybe about Diablo 1, like just the origins, because the first Diablo is basically the only real demon or the... I never played Diablo personally, but I know the story is mainly about Tristram and Diablo. I, that's my guess, or maybe it's just talking about the history of Diablo in general, because it's Lord of Terror is Diablo's name. Um, I guess we can look at the description here. Uh, tonight is a long, sad tale of bravery, betrayal, and the greatest blight of destruction that changed the very fabric of our world after the burning hells and the high heavens discovered sanctuary's existence. Um, interesting that they say destruction, so maybe they'll talk about Bale too. Um, so maybe it's, I mean, it's the fact that it's capitalized destruction is why I'm like thinking Bale. Up, oh, just hit my hand here. Uh, as you can see, there's me, there's my other video I recommended. Uh, <laughs> anyways, let's um, let's start the let's start watching it. I'm really excited. This is actually a 14 minute one, so this is a little longer. So yeah, it's, let's do it. All right. The Lord of Terror. Another night, and you brought more ale. Stronger stuff this time. The AM for me, Snow Essential Ale. Thanks for keeping warm here in the Fractured Peaks. Pour me a cup. Tonight is a long, sad tale of bravery and betrayal, and the great blight of destruction that changed the very fabric of our world. Well, that's literally the description they wrote on the. <laughs> The video. When last we spoke, we spoke of Inarius and Lilith, humankind's creation. I am going to pause through this. So this is the map of Sanctuary. Um, look at that. All of our zones. Fractured Peaks, Skazglen, Tordura. I guess that's going to be the capital for Skazglen, the capital for the Fractured Peaks. Chaldeum is Kajistan. I wonder if Urich is the Hawizar? Zone. So we got one capital, two capital, three capital, four capital. Where's the triceps cap? I don't know. Anyways, very cool map. We kind of know about this. Uh, there's Tristram. Anyways, let's keep going. How humanity found itself caught by on Arter Mount Ariat. A battle that does not belong to humankind, but one we must fight nonetheless. Two rival groups, the Temple of the Triune and the Cathedral of Light, sprang up on the world of Sanctuary. And strove to win over the hearts of mankind. Very cool. The Triune was secretly backed by the three prime evils, Mephisto, Baal, and Diablo, who had discovered sanctuaries. Huh, I will say the Triune. I don't know much about the history of the Triune. I know about the Cathedral of the Light, right? But, um, interesting that there's basically two factions. It reminds me of like Warcraft, right? The Horde and the Alliance. Whereas those are both like decently good fashion. This one's there's clearly a good side and an evil side. As we, at least that's what we think, I guess. Resistance. Inarius secretly founded the Cathedral of Light in response, yeah. an attempt to counter their malevolent influence. Unbeknownst to either the prime evils or Inarius, Lilith returned to Sanctuary to reawaken her children's dormant powers, knowing they had the ability to banish the. I did not know that. So after she was banished before, she got. So she's come back twice, is, is what I'm understanding. So Narius banished her after she killed all of the um, demons and angels. But she somehow returned and gave the uh, Nephilim back some of their powers. I didn't know that. That's Agents of the Burning Hells and in for me. good. Soon after, Sanctuary was engulfed in what would become known as the Sin War. A catastrophic proxy war over the souls of humankind. I think there's a book on it. Humanity won the war. Right. But they faced another kind of battle. The high so humanity won. So was she banished a second time? So she was banished twice? Maybe I'm misunderstanding that, but that's what it sounds like. The heavens too became aware of Sanctuary and her blasphemous children, and now deliberated on humanity's ultimate fate. With the Angiris Council split, the Archangel Tyriel cast the final vote to spare us from extermination. You recall that. Instead, the memory of all that came before was taken from humankind, including knowledge of their inherited power. In exchange for their part in leaving... 
So I knew about the Tyrael being the final vote, kind of the save humanity, but I didn't know that they like erased all of humans' memories. I guess that makes sense because we don't know much about our past. Sanctuary alone. Or the Nephilim. The burning did. hells took Inarius into their custody, and it is said that he has suffered unending torments at their hands ever since. Right, he was banished of course, to hell. it is not the nature of the burning hells to leave well enough alone, and before long. Uh, Bale, Bale, Diablo, Mephisto. I don't remember Mephisto having such big horns. To corrupt humankind were or he looks different in Diablo too. The lesser evils, led by Asmodan and Belial, staged an uprising that upset the established order of the Burning Hells. Convinced the prime evils had abandoned the eternal conflict in favor of corrupting humanity, the usurpers set out to banish the three prime evils to Sanctuary. They lost fully one third of their army. But they succeeded in banishing Mephisto, Bale, and Diablo into the mortal realm in what would come to be known as the Dark Exile. The Dark Exile. I knew parts of this war. I still find it weird that these three are like the they were the prime evils. How did they lose to the four lesser evils? Um I wish that was there was more de there probably is more detail to that. Maybe they were outsmarted or tricked or something. Um I bet you maybe it's in a book and I just don't remember or know about it. Um, but yeah, I always thought it was interesting that these guys, um, I do find it fascinating that they were kind of influenced. These guys wanted to influence humans. I guess they saw the potential in humans too, kind of like how Willith and Inarius did, that corrupting them was more important. Like if they could sway the humans or the Nephilim, then they could win, That they can finally end the eternal conflict. It's they spent decades spreading terror, hatred, and destruction across the land. It is here that the story of the Haradrim begins. When Tyriel assembled a group of powerful mages and tasked them with humanity's defense, standing fast against the tyranny of the prime evils and guarding against the wrathful eyes of the heavens falling upon humankind once again. Tyriel carved three soul stones from pieces of the world stone, right. crystalline prisons designed to contain the malignant essence of a prime evil. You know, it's always funny. I do love that, you know, there's different gems for each uh, prime evil. For some reason, it's stupid. This reminds me of like Pokemon. <laughs> I used to play Pokemon way back in the day. But look, you literally got the yellow one, Zapdos. You have like the three elements, right? The lightning, Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres. Like the, it's a weird analogy, but like I always found it funny that they use these like primary colors. Well, not, uh, yeah, the primary colors, I guess, for the different gemstones, but. Sapphire for Mephisto. Amber for Bale, and Crimson for Diablo. Under Tyriel's guidance, the Haradrim searched across the vastness of Sanctuary for the Lords of Hell, with the aim to contain them. The Haradrim found Mephisto, and after much struggle imprisoned him. The Sapphire Soulstone was given to the Zakarum for safekeeping. Zakarum, so yeah, so this is Act 3. Is it Act 3, Diablo 2? Where he was trapped in Zakarum, and over time he kind of corrupted the paladins in the Zakarum there until they finally became fall like they kind of turned into followers of him. I know that's a very butchered version of the story, but that's kind of what I remember is he kind of corrupted them within the gemstone, and eventually that whole priest in Zakarum kind of became his followers. They also battled Veil, vale, but in the process, the soul stone intended for him was shattered. The order's leader. Tal Rasha huh. trapped Bale's essence in the largest shard of the amber. Interesting. Like I know, I know the story of where Bale is trapped, but I didn't know the shard broke during their battle, and that's why it's only a shard of the gemstone. It's not the full thing. I never knew that part. Cool. Soul stone, but feared that was insufficient. The Haradrim concluded they could fuse the shard to a human body in an effort to better contain Bale's power. Tal Rasha. Huh selflessly volunteered his own body to contain the lord of destruction see this is cool like so some of this information i, I knew bar i knew most of the not most i say a, a good portion of the war but this makes sense because why was only bale the one that had to be imprisoned within another person you know all the other you know well i guess diablo was too right he was imprisoned in the diablo one hero it's weird that mephisto didn't he was just or maybe he was i don't know destruction's raging essence Tyriel himself took up the solemn duty of driving the shard into Talrash's heart. Man, that's definitely a dark story. Within a subterranean tomb, 
believing they were leaving him to suffer torment beyond Act two, Diablo. as he struggled to hold fast the monstrous Lord of Destruction for all of time. In the wake of this tragedy, Jared Kane took leadership of the bruised and battered mages. Together, the Haradrim spent nearly ten years following Diablo's path of terror through Sanctuary, until finally coming to blows and containing him within the Crimson Soulstone. Diablo's soul stone was carefully hidden deep in a labyrinthian cave system by the Haradrim. To guard the great evil hidden in its depths, a Haradric monastery was built atop the caves. The hope, I believe, was that it would never be disturbed, and that Diablo would be forgotten in the great below, his influence fading with time. But that was not to be. No prison can last forever. So long as a key exists, its door can be opened. Hmm. It's funny he says that. Can I wonder if there is a way to destroy the key? I guess the key is the gemstone, and if they break the gemstone, then uh, he's released. Maybe there is no way to get rid of the, the land key. near that small monastery would eventually be settled, and the quiet, prosperous town of Tristram. Was There's the Tristram there. music. None could have known, except perhaps Diablo, the grim fate that would befall the unfortunate souls that called Tristram home. Over time, I hope we visit there in Diablo 4 at some point. powers influenced the land, and Tristram became politically significant. At the behest of the Zacharum Church, and guided by Archbishop Lazarus, a Zacharum Lord named Leoric crowned Leoric. himself King okay. of Kandurus. Yeah, so now this is basically... I never fully played Diablo 1, I kind of know the main of the story, but this is basically now they're six minutes in. They kind of were just giving the background, but this is the story of... The story of Diablo 1 only partakes in Tristram. It's kind of cool how each each Diablo game kind of gets bigger. The first the first Diablo is basically just your whole character plays through Tristram. Diablo two, you actually you actually span out pretty far into different regions of uh, Sanctuary. I think Diablo three is even bigger than that, and then Diablo four, you know, is kind of an open world where hopefully they'll just keep adding in zones, which is kind of different to their other games. I guess they've kind of done that, but you know, Diablo four is still like Tristram is capital. He converted the old Haradric monastery into his seat of power, unaware of the threat that lurked beneath. Leoric was wise and just, ushering in an era of peace and prosperity for Tristram. But with time, his outlook darkened, and he grew irrational, his mind slipping towards madness and paranoia. Corruption of Diablo there. The king began ordering the execution of any who questioned him. People started calling him the Black King. Guessing like... Diablo, Bale, Mephisto can like whisper corrupt people just within a gemstone. Lazarus's council, an unjust and unwinnable war. Leoric's eldest son, Aiden, joined the fight, seeking approval from his father. I think Aiden, I'm pretty sure it's Aiden that's the hero of Diablo 1. Like, so there was a there was a sorceress, a, a, a warrior, and a rogue, but I think they, they, I wouldn't say retcon, but they just chose to make the warrior like the canon character. It actually defeats Diablo. Shortly after Aiden's departure, Leoric's youngest son, Albrecht, went missing. Leoric tortured and executed many of his own people in his frenzy to find his son. His knights, freshly returned from the war and appalled at the state of their kingdom, were forced to slay the Black King to stop the brutality. In an attempt to honor the man he had been, Leoric was given a proper burial in the old catacombs. Aiden too returned to find a kingdom in shambles. Rumors of the horrific happenings in Tristram spread, along with the news of the appearance of demonic creatures, and brought adventurers to Tristram. Two such adventurers joined Prince Aiden this undead Leor? and he entered the catacombs to find his brother Albrecht. During this harrowing journey, Aiden was forced to strike down his own father who had been reanimated as a foul entity called the Skeleton King. Here he is. Also in Diablo 3. Continuing on, Aiden soon found Diablo himself. After a great <coughs> battle of fire and steel, the Lord of Terror was defeated. Yep. But this ending is not a happy one. For Diablo had twisted young Albrecht's body into his own demonic form. In slaying the demon, Aiden had slain his younger brother. Yep. Kind of the grim, Distort. tragic ending. Aiden pulled the soul stone from Albright the Diablo one. and plunged it into his own body. In the weeks that followed,
So that was basically that summarized basically Diablo one. Yeah, the, at the end, that the only way to help the to contain this is like I always thought this part a little weird that he would just why didn't he bring it to the Haradrim, the gemstone once he killed Diablo, and you know do what they did with the other ones where they tuck it underground somewhere, but instead he decided to impale it into his brain or his skull. Um, but you know they had to make a Diablo two right because that yeah, this is basically the start to Diablo two. We would seek comfort with a local witch named Adria, slowly succumbing to Diablo's. Oh, look influence. at that! I like how they show Cain like. Eventually traveled east from Tristan. This is where the wanderer is traveling. Became known as the Dark Wanderer, <laughs> set on liberating Bale and Mephisto. Yeah, so basically Tristram, that was Act One, and then we follow him. You know, basically when he's in Luke Lame, we're here. So. As the Dark Wanderer traveled east, a new group of adventurers arrived in uh -huh. Tristram. They were right, so yeah, see, we're here, and then they're about to leave Luke Goem, and this is where he, um, Marius, Marius, it's Marius or Marius, but remember, he had the, um, oh no, he didn't have it. I forgot. They went to Talrasha's tomb and got Bale's gemstone because they were gonna, right, and then Bale started following him. I forgot. Yeah, Bale. They basically let Bale free and imprisoned Tyrion. Rescued Deckard Cain from the ruins of Tristram, who implored them to give chase. Soon the party found themselves taking part in a dangerous pursuit of the Lord of Terror. Following the Dark Wanderer's path towards the tomb of Talrasha, the adventurers mm -hmm. would face the lesser evils of Andariel and Duriel. I should stop talking. I'm just basically Delta. telling him what he what Lorath is saying. Instead of Talrasha, they discovered Tyrion imprisoned in the tomb. Yeah. <laughs> Bale, still using Talrasha as a vessel, had escaped imprisonment to join Diablo in his guise as the Dark Wanderer. Together, they had overcome Tyrion and trapped him in the prison he'd made for Bale so long ago. The heroes pressed on to find Mephisto. The Act Lord three, Mephisto. Deep in the I will say that art is beautiful. I do miss. I think in the in the Diablo two one, this. I mean, who cares? He's still he's very similar. He's always been like a skeletal figure. Basically missing wags. He had two arms and missing wags. And very skeletal. Like very I actually think he's the more most gruesome looking out of the three, Mephisto, Bale, and Diablo. Bale, Diablo's like the generic big buff demon guy. Actually, I think Bale's pretty cool too, but I just there's something really eerie and cool about Mephisto's look. Um I love the artwork for Mephisto here. Of very cool. Once more the And he's the Act Three boss. Diablo, as he shed what little of Aiden remained reverting to his monstrous demonic form before returning to the burning hells to rally his demonic legions. Mephisto remained behind, believing he could defeat the brave pursuers. His confidence was nope. misplaced. The Lord of Hatred was defeated and sealed in the Sapphire Soul Stone. Cool imagery. I definitely, the art, the art and imagery of the storytelling, like there's not a much, it's crazy how, you know, they're on each image for maybe a minute, maybe a little while, like, minute to 30 seconds and they can still give so much story while it's being the narrated followed the lord of awesome. terror into the burning hells thinking only of sanctuary and not the grim fate that likely awaited them there at Tyrion's request the heroes confronted the corrupted angel Isuel on the plains of despair act four in slaying him Good. the heroes freed Isuel's spirit and he informed them that the prime evils knew how to corrupt the soul stones this information, Cain sent the heroes to the Hellforge to destroy the Sapphire Soulstone in the hopes that this would prevent Mephisto from manifesting in this world ever again. Once there, interestingly enough, since this occurrence, from my knowledge, we it did work, but I'm guessing in Diablo 4 he's finally going to make a return. Yeah, maybe not at, at the original campaign, but at some point in the future, if they're making Diablo 4 live service. If they don't show up in the main game, Fisto, Bale, and Diablo will show up at some point. I think they were banished for a while, so this work, this did, I mean, for over 60 years, because it's been 50 years, 60 years since Diablo 2, something like that. So it has worked for 60 years, I guess, but in the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot of time. They had to defeat a demon called Hephasto the Armorer, a towering monstrosity with wide horns. His powerful arm strengthened by thousands and thousands of strikes with his Hellforge hammer against the anvil. After successfully destroying the Sapphire Soulstone, the heroes traveled deep into Diablo, the there he is. Hells to face the Lord of Terror himself. 
Act four. They fought a fierce, pitched battle against increasingly dire odds deep in Diablo's own realm. But the heroes fought and defeated Diablo. They pulled the shard from Diablo's head, trapping his essence inside, and returned to the Hellforge to destroy it as well. With this momentous yep. achievement, only Bale remained to threaten. That was the end of the original Diablo 2 storyline, and now this is yeah, the Lord of Destruction um, patch. Not patch. Uh, expansion, uh, which was Act 5. Um, I love the artwork here, too. Um, beautiful. Century. Unfortunately. I like how he has a skull. For some reason, that reminds me of uh, Illidan Stormrage holding the orc. Holding the... Uh... Oh, gosh, the orc. The evil warlock orc. I'm blanking on his name. But, you know, he was always carrying around a skull. Only for us. Even one prime evil can unleash inconceivable devastation. As the heroes struggled with Diablo in Hell, Bale, Lord of Destruction, set his demonic army on a course to Mount Ariat, annihilating all in his path on the way to his prize, the World Star. Survivor accounts describe the prime evil atop his litter, surveying the barbarian city of Sesheron with ravenous malice and an insatiable lust. The Act 5 cinematic was so cool with uh, Bale invading was a wasteland Mount Ariat. With blood. It is both humbling and horrifying to know how close he was to achieving that goal. Thanks to the bravery of the barbarians in the town of Haragath at the base of Mount Ariat, Bale's army was temporarily repelled, buying time enough for reinforcements and the heroes that had slain Diablo and Mephisto to arrive. They fought their way through Bale's army, up the mountain, and finally into the very heart of Sanctuary, the World Stone Keep. Though our heroes ultimately defeated Bale, they could not stop his poisonous malice from infecting Corrupted the world. The world stone. A difficult choice had to be made, and so it was. Cyril chose to destroy the world stone rather than let it fall to corruption. Boom. He hurled his great sword Eldruin at the world stone, shattering it. Saved Some us. Some of its shards fell to earth. Shards fell to earth. So funny enough, I think. This is kind of how they started the story for Diablo uh, Immortal, the phone, the phone game. Um, I don't know much about the Diablo Immortal story. I, 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 maybe it's important. I hope it's just more like filler. You know, the Diablo Immortal, the Diablo Four. Right? No, I think Diablo. It goes Diablo Two, Diablo Immortal, then Diablo Three. So it is pretty much kind of filler, I guess, because I think the big, the big stories are Diablo Two and Diablo Three. Um, yeah, apparently these like shards fell to earth and spawned all these demons, and that's kind of what your heroes do in Diablo Immortal. I never played Diablo Immortal. I uh, don't don't play phone games, so even a Diablo game, and I love the Diablo universe. Imbued with power, the World Stone was nearly as large as the mountain that housed it, and its destruction turned the imposing peak of Mount Ariat into nothing more than a vast crater. Ariat Crater. Local settlements and tribes scattered to the wind, many forced to seek new homes. And it is in this new world, deeply wounded by the treachery of the prime evils, that the next chapter in our history unfolded. Chapter? That was great. The tragic tale of Lear, Diablo's assault on heaven, yep. and Malthael's betrayal, and why so few of us remain. Take care in the darkness. There's more lurking out there than the wind. That, that was great. Yeah, so basically they're foreshadowing that. I'm guessing the next episode will be the last one. My, that's my assumption. Um, Because he did basically foreshadow talking about everything that happens in Diablo 3 and the expansion Reaper of Souls. So I guess they are going to skip over Immortal, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so I'm guessing the next episode will be the last one. Because, I mean, the game comes out in less than a week. I bet you we'll get an episode four um, Tuesday or next Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, this was awesome. Um, I'm just going to scroll around here. What was? Let's look for some cool art. Here we go, the three primevals. Uh, there we go, that's a cool piece of art just to end on. Um, yeah, this was great. Uh I love that they're doing this. They're literally giving you 
uh, Warath or just the Diablo team, you know, he's narrating it. But uh, they're literally just giving you the whole breakdown of the War of Diablo. And, you know, I know m more or less more of the nerdy hardcore people are going to be watching this on YouTube. I, you know, maybe, maybe more people watch YouTube nowadays, but, you know, people that are watching or pre-ordering or buying this game off of commercials on TV aren't going to see this probably. But I do think, you know, people are researching, looking up Diablo because it's about to be released. I hope this war really does help them because I, I think the story in War of Diablo is so cool. I've said this in every video with these war books, and that's why I like reacting. I don't react to everything, but the war stuff is so awesome. And I maybe my insight was helpful. They were very good. Like, I didn't need to say much. Basically, everything I said, they kind of uh, went into detail over anyways. But, um, yeah, this is so cool. And, uh... Hopefully enjoyed this and uh yeah, I guess gonna be a there's definitely gonna be a fourth episode. I know that. I don't know if there'll be a fifth. I think fourth the next episode will be the last one, because then it then we start Diablo 4 and get the Diablo 4 store, and I cannot wait to know life Diablo 4. So um yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this uh video. You know, leave a comment if I maybe was misinformed on something. I'm no I'm no super lore guy. I just I know the basics of everything and I've kind of read up on everything recently. Especially Diablo 2, because I just played Resurrected a year ago. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.